periodontal tissues, guardians of our smile. Our mouth can be compared to a battlefield and our teeth to foot soldiers. To win the battle, they not only need to carry out their function individually, but also as a unit. And they need to stand their ground, firm and strong. We all know that teeth are housed in sockets of the upper and lower jaws, known as the alveolar sockets. But have you ever wondered how they stay in place? Teeth are held firm in their alveolar sockets by a connective tissue called the periodontium. Let's discuss this. The term periodontium is made up of the words peri, meaning surrounding, and odont, meaning tooth. Thus, the periodontium refers to the structure that surrounds the tooth. The periodontium is made up of two soft tissues, gingiva and periodontal ligament, and two hard tissues, alveolar bone, and cementum. Let us now look at each of these components starting with the gingiva. The gingiva is the part of the oral mucosa that covers the alveolar bone. Teeth erupt from the alveolar bone through the gingiva. Thus, the gingiva forms a covering on the underlying bone and surrounds the neck of the teeth in a collar-like fashion. The gingiva can be demarcated into marginal or free gingiva, attached gingiva, and interdental gingiva or papilla. Marginal or free gingiva is the portion of the gingiva that forms the collar around the tooth. Attached gingiva is firmly attached to the underlying alveolar bone. And an interdental gingiva or papilla is found between two teeth. Let us move on to the periodontal ligament which are like rubber bands attached to the tooth. They act as shock absorbers because teeth are subjected to mechanical stresses while performing their daily functions. The ligament is densely vascular and fibrous in nature and attaches the tooth to the underlying bone. Histologically, they are similar to the skeletal tendons and ligaments. Did you know that there is a small degree of movement naturally present in our teeth? It is called physiological mobility. The normal physiological mobility is 0.108 mm buccolingually and 0.028 mm apically. This is owing to the presence of our shock absorbers, the periodontal ligament. This slight mobility accommodates the chewing forces on teeth and helps to distribute them to the bone during chewing without damaging them. There are different groups of periodontal fibers along the length of the tooth. Various diseases compromise the efficiency of the periodontal fibers. As each group of fiber is lost, the tooth comes loose in the socket and is said to be mobile. Gradually, as the disease progresses, the tooth is held only by the fibers at the apex of the root. At this stage, the tooth has lost the battle and would need to be extracted. We will discuss more about this in the video on periodontal ligament. And now we move on to the heart tissues, beginning with the cementum. It is a thin, specialized, mineralized tissue that covers the root surfaces and, on rare occasions, a small amount of the tooth's crown. The main function of the cementum is to provide a surface for attachment of the periodontal ligaments. Finally, we have the alveolar bone, which is the part of the upper and lower jaw bones that surrounds the teeth. The main functions of the alveolar bones are to house the roots of the teeth and absorb and distribute occlusal forces. The parts of alveolar bone include alveolar bone proper, compact bone, and cancellous bone. Radiographically, alveolar bone proper is known as the lamina dura. Now that you have a basic understanding of the components of periodontium, let us move on to its clinical application. Health of the periodontium is paramount to the health and long life of the teeth. Numerous diseases can affect the periodontium. By far, the most important of these is plaque-associated gingivitis and periodontitis. 
Gingivitis refers to the inflammation of the gingiva and affects only the gingiva. On the other hand, periodontitis or inflammation of the periodontium affects all the four periodontal structures we discussed earlier. When untreated, gingivitis can progress to periodontitis. This could result in the loss of the structures that keep the tooth firmly attached to its socket, leading to tooth loss. Moving on from clinical anatomy now, let's talk about periodontics as a subject. Periodontics is a branch of dentistry that deals with the diseases or conditions affecting the supporting structures of the teeth. The Glossary of Periodontal Terms 2001 defines periodontics as that speciality of dentistry which encompasses the prevention, diagnosis and treatment of diseases of the supporting and surrounding tissues of the teeth or their substitutes, the maintenance of the health, function and aesthetics of these structures and tissues and the replacement of lost teeth and supporting structures by grafting or implantation of natural and synthetic devices and materials. A periodontist is a dental specialist who is an expert in treating periodontal diseases and who aims for the maintenance of ideal periodontal health, which in turn helps to maintain ideal oral health. Details about this will be covered in our subsequent videos. Let us see how much you have learned. Pop quiz We hope you had fun learning with us.